It is now my privilege to introduce the member of our faculty whom the graduating class have chosen as their faculty speaker, Dr. Patricia Pasavento. <laughs> Dr. Pasavento is a graduate of Swarthmore College and has received her PhD from Harvard University in Cellular and Molecular Biology. She received her DVM in Pathology Residency Training sequentially at the School of Veterinary Medicine at UC Davis and joined the faculty in the Department of Pathology, Microbiology, and Immunology where she enjoys her tripartite position that includes clinics, research, and teaching. Dr. Pasavento's laboratory has currently focused on viral discovery in intensely housed animals, such as small animals in shelter environment, and viruses that arise or take advantage of the human domestic animal wildlife interface. Along the way, her laboratory has investigated the biology and interaction of viruses with their target tissues, work that ranges from the development of viral constructs to cell biology or diagnostics and tissue culture methods for virus cell interactions. On behalf of the graduating class of 2018, I am pleased to present the faculty speaker, Dr. Patricia Pasavento. Okay, thanks to Dr. May. I think that my uh, introduction, which was very generous, should just be turtle, fence post. <laughs> turtle, fence post. Does that do it? <laughs> okay. All right, welcome to moms and dads and aunts and uncles, sisters, brothers, all of you mentors, and all of you people who are so close to these, this class that you're called aunts and uncles. All of you family and friends out there, I know why you're here. You know these men and women on stage and what they've accomplished. You know how hard, how incredibly hard they've worked to get to this and who they are in their hearts. There was a little bit of bottom wiping involved and you got them through their teenage years and for that, we the faculty thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for loaning us your great kids. And on behalf of the class of 2018, our faculty, our administration, we thank you very much for your love and your support. So we all know why you are here. And to our distinguished, intelligent, really good looking graduating class <laughs> of 2018, you are the stars of this end and this beginning. I know the intensity of your medical training, how many hours and struggles you went through to pull this all together, how very seriously you took this challenge, and how sincerely devoted you are to your education. And I know that as a team and as individuals, you well deserve to take this stage. I know that's why you're here. What I'm not at all sure about is why I'm here. And I hadn't ever really had any reason to question the thoughtful intelligence of this class until just about right now. <laughs> so I need to have a little conversation, and I hope you'll excuse me, faculty and friends and family. I need to have a conversation with this class about this situation <laughs> so that we can walk through together the possibilities, maybe, of why I'm here, because I want to get this right. OK? So I thought of three. There's always three. OK, number one. You want to make Dean Larimore really nervous. <laughs> I totally get that. Mission accomplished. You do not help to create the best veterinary school in the entire solar system. That just in from NASA. And you certainly do not become the dean of anything by relinquishing this kind of control. So good, well done. <laughs> Number two, I thought you all maybe felt strongly that since these are our very, very last precious few minutes together, that it's vital that we take the time to review enterohepatic circulation. <laughs> I'm gonna be truthful, I was never entirely confident you guys got that entirely right. <laughs> but I will post an annotated PDF with two different background colors on 
on either Sear or Canvas or maybe Viper, <laughs> under a new file box that's labeled something totally enigmatic, about four minutes before you need it, because as you all know, that's how I roll. And number three, and as you know, three is always the most important. I think this may be an absolutely wonderful, generous, if somewhat misguided vote of confidence that I can make a point. <laughs> so you think I'd be trained for that. UC Davis has taught me a lot about effective teaching in the 10 years that I've been faculty. But it's been a very long-standing challenge for me to use my words in a selective and clear way to make a specific point. You know how when you were growing up and you were trying to make a point in some super effective way and your mom or dad interrupted and said, honey, use your words. <laughs> honey, use your words. Well, in my house, my mother would say, Patty, sweetie, maybe you don't need to use all your words all the time. <laughs> so for me, this has always been somewhat of a signal to noise ratio problem. But I think especially thanks to the patience of my co-faculty, my fence post, and of you students, I'm a little bit closer to perfect, but nonetheless willing to entertain the possibility that there's still some room for, for improvement. And to that end, I would like to share with you a succinct and extremely accurate evaluation from one of this class about my teaching style. <laughs> Dr. Pesavento lectures like a raccoon trapped in an espresso coffee shop. Thank you. Knowing that is my style completely liberates me of any fear that you will remember my point if I ever get to it. <laughs> so talking here today, and I thank you for that, is an absolute terrifying privilege. I've sat down with your class prezies, Caroline, Arash, Tanya, Daniela was there, and I've also sat down with Jordan. She's a vice pres, but there's what, 20 of you? So um, I've also sat down with the chosen class speaker who's up next, Jordan. Jordan and I have tried to put a positive spin on the preparation for these talks by calling it our spring weight loss program. <laughs> I'm an anatomic pathologist. I'm a diagnostician. And I have the privilege of looking at bumps, lumps, and bodies. And I love my job. I love being a di in the diagnostic team, especially a diagnostic team here at UC Davis. But I'm up here trying to represent all of you useful veterinarians, your real veterinarians, the ones I take my animals to, OK? <laughs> when I chose my career path by Googling the term veterinary careers where you don't have to hit a vein, I do not know what the radiologists are laughing at right now. <laughs> so back to my point. My point is all about you understanding your value. And to help me with this, as you guys know, I asked your class for words, or even a word, a story, or any thoughts about your individual classmates or your class as a whole. I know your bright and curious minds but I wanted to capitalize on your words in a way to get to know you better. And your words were nothing less than inspiring. Your class has a remarkable bond, and Jordan will be talking about that and what that means. For me, your words are at the very center of the point that I totally intend to make. <laughs> I collected your own words, those of your school brothers and your school sisters, because I knew I'd be up here in a position to share them with you. And I want you to really, really, really listen to them. You are loved, impressive, thoughtful, deeply intelligent, artistic, creative, perseverant, funny, supportive, honorable, unimaginably strong, inspiring, generous, genius, resilient, balanced, and freaking badass. <laughs> But 
But as a member of the human race, you are also, and this is my word, in a pickle. <laughs> and by in a pickle, I mean that you are evolutionarily screwed. <laughs> you and all of us here have a thing that the psychologists call a negativity bias, where things of a more negative nature, like unpleasant social interactions or maybe a criticism, have a greater effect on your psyche than positive things. Perhaps the easiest explanation I can give here is to say that everything I've just said, everything that you've just said, all of this overwhelming evidence that you are important and intelligent, those words are not as powerful in your evolved brains as a negative statement. In theory, and by theory I mean an idea that is completely unencumbered by any real data, <laughs> this is a bias that our brains have so that we won't be eaten by a velociraptor. So when Darwin laid out his survival of the fittest, fittest theory, it presumes that the fittest survive because they worry enough about that rustling bush over there that they have time to procreate. <laughs> so the worriers are pervasive, and they swim wall to wall in your gene pool. So when someone says something that you interpret as hurtful, you hold on to it, you wake up considering it, you fret about it, you worry. But I'm willing to bet you've never, ever, ever been sleep deprived because someone says you're great, or you're gorgeous, or that you've helped them in ways that they could never, ever repay. And so my goal in these few minutes, my point, is to try to make you hold on to the positive things when you most need them. My point is to fight that little part of evolution, ignore the velociraptors, because P.S. they are extinct. <laughs> and today is almost too easy, because today you're surrounded by hundreds of people who are pummeling you with love and compliments. If I could silkscreen all of those compliments onto your robes, I would wrap you in those robes right now. But that would only work if you took your robe with you, and if you do that, you'll be led handcuffed to the UC Davis Penitentiary. <laughs> So let's create an inv invisible compliment praise robe that you can put on any time, any time at all that you need it. Your compliment praise robe, your CPR for short. <laughs> I like it because it shares an acronym with cardiopulmonary resuscitation, <laughs> which is also a life-saving way to bring you back to who you are. I was going to just go with praise robe, but that's per rectum. didn't work as well. <laughs> so carry with you your CPR, your compliment and praise robe, onto which we've printed all of your positive feedback, because you're about to be ziplined out the door to some place where most of your classmates are not, to a job that will be challenging, often emotional, fantastic, and where your informed medical decisions will deeply, deeply matter. And there will be people in your life who will tell you how precious you are, and you should keep them around. But in general, feedback is rare. I so very seriously want you to take all the positive comments that you get and hold on to them as you try to balance the tough days in your life. And from my wonderful co-faculty, my colleagues who are also your school sisters and school brothers, let me add their faculty words to your compliment praise robe. Our faculty have written about you that you are solid, professional, caring, logical, reliable, curious, talented, hardworking, empathetic, delightful, insightful, ethical, an absolute pleasure, bright, generous, and all in all, extremely impressive. Medicine is medicine. It is, as we talked about year one, a three-dimensional wisdom that cannot be practiced as a collection of facts. Being an excellent cl clinician means living with respect for what you don't know. It means having a humility that's necessary to keep you from making unfounded assumptions, and the humility and graciousness to carefully listen to the animals and the people that love them. So be humble about your medicine, by all means. It's a humbling profession. But do not be humble about who you are. Do not be humble about how precious, how important, and how intelligent you are. Know that we are all unimaginably 
and deeply, deeply proud of you. So that's my point. That's our point. Class of 2018, you have so got this. Yeah.